What I really enjoyed about this project was um, working so closely with project partners. So I had the action to uh, implement a translocation, but I didn't know even if the species was a distinct species, let alone um, whether I was putting plants in with the most diverse um, genetics. Um, so yeah, without the genetics team, I wouldn't have a translocation at all. Hey everyone, Chantel here from the Research Centre for Ecosystem Resilience at the Botanic Gardens, Sydney. I am in Southern Sydney today, visiting a translocation site for a newly described species called Eucalyptus cryptica. Eucalyptus cryptica used to be called Eucalyptus species cati, and for a very, very long time, taxonomists couldn't decide if it was a unique species or if it was a hybrid. And that's because eucalypts do this really funky thing where they hybridize quite readily. Using genetics, the team was able to confirm that actually it was a unique species, which was very exciting because it was right in Sydney, but also it did hybridize with quite a few other species around it. In this video, Dr. Samantha Yap from the Research Centre for Ecosystem Resilience is going to explain how genetic data was used to identify and plan an optimised translocation once the team had determined that Eucalyptus cryptica was indeed a species. So translocation is a costly and laborious uh, effort. So we want to make sure that any plants that we include in the translocation is worthwhile. That this means that we need to uh, maximize genetic diversity in the translocation population to ensure that the species is as fit as possible and able to adapt to any uh, environmental pressures. Oh, there were seedlings available in the ex situ collection at the Australian Botanic Gardens in Mount Annan. The seedlings came from a number of mothers. We want to make sure that uh, seedlings that are related to each other are not put together just so that we uh, can minimise the risk of inbreeding. And we want to make sure that the selection of seedlings used are properly genetically diverse before we uh, put it into the translocation population. The team uses an in-house developed workflow that is continually modified and refined. Analyses are conducted using genome-wide SNPs, which are single nucleotide polymorphisms. These sequences are prepared at the DART facilities, which use next generation or high throughput sequencing. When the data is returned, it looks something like this. This is essentially a coded matrix, where zero means this sample has two copies or is a homozygote of the reference allele. One means the sample is a SNP homozygote, meaning it has two copies of the SNP allele, and two means the sample is a heterozygote and has one copy of the reference allele and one copy of the SNP allele. And so using the genome-wide SNPs, we uh, analyzed that data set on R um, using a range of different techniques. Can you show me? Yes, I can. Okay. So this grid here is generated first off by my colleague Jason Bragg, and he has an in-house developed uh, R package called RR tools. It first set off to um, do a range of quality filtering, and the filtering involves removing any loci that have greater than twenty percent missingness, um, which is where this is, and also a minimum reproducibility of at least ninety six percent. And we also do another step where we select only one SNP per locus so that we avoid any potential linkage issues. Once cleaned and any hybrids, clones or outgroups removed, SNP data is then matched with metadata such as location and analysed. Analysis is conducted using a package called OptGenMix developed by Dr Jason Bragg, which is freely available on GitHub. Opgen mix can be used for translocations, but also to inform collections or living collections and can help maximize the diversity 
whilst minimising the number of plants required. In this case, Opgen Mix was used to inform which plants from the ex situ living collection should be included in a translocated population to make sure that the genetic diversity of the wild population was going to be captured in a new constructed translocated population of Eucalyptus cryptica. And so with Eucalyptus cryptica, we would run through uh, populations of different sizes from 20 to 55 um, to estimate what's the most optimal for those sizes. And this analysis would run through 10,000 steps where it um, tries to find the most um, optimal solution. And in this case, it's the combination of individuals with the highest number of shared alleles. Uh, the results are showing that 55 individuals is the uh, most optimum solution for um, the translocation and this would capture 95% of the genetic diversity. If you only have 20 individuals to use for your translocation, the randomized solution will give you less than 90% of the genetic diversity Whereas if you use our optimized solution, you get almost 94% of the diversity just based on 20 individuals. A planting design can then be developed. Plants are put into clumps based on individuals which are least similar to try and maximize outcrossing. Color coding of similar plants is used to make assignment into planting clumps simple. There are limitations in applying this method. We do put a disclaimer on it. Um, that is because our Opgen mix analysis is based on the available genetic data uh, of the entire uh, population or populations of the species. And so it depends on how representatively you sample the uh, species or population. Another limitation is employing the same method for repeat translocations. The first translocation of Eucalyptus cryptica occurred in 2020 and used the 55 individuals recommended in Opgen Mix. When a second translocation was required in 2022, a new analysis was needed because Eucalyptus cryptica, like many eucalypts, can only be grown from seeds, meaning each of the individuals to be planted represented a unique, previously untested genotype. This problem doesn't present if you are using a clonal or cutting collection. Now, let's go back to where we started and find out how this translocation has gone. Hi, I'm Enwa. Um, we're here today at a translocation site for Eucalyptus species cati. Um, and we're here to do um, three years post-planting monitoring um, for the first batch of plants that we put in and one year post-planting translocation monitoring for the second batch of plants. This one here is one of my favourite plants. Look how big he's grown. So this is three years old. It's almost time to be able to take the uh, tree guard off. <laughs> this is one of the smallest plants that we have and he is actually planted as part of the first batch. Oh wow! He's still hanging in there. Jeez. So this is three years old? This is three years old. Can I pull that out? Sure, I actually do some hand weeding every time I'm here. Enwa's monitoring has shown some plants are performing really well, whilst others are, in some instances, barely growing. Genetics can help inform replacement of these plants if necessary, with something that has a similar allele profile, but might respond better to the local environment. We know exactly what um, their genotypes are, um, and so we can follow up to see where, which populations they came from, and um, look at how we might propagate some of the more healthy ones. I asked Enwa the value of this translocation. Oh, look, there's just so few of these plants out in um, their natural distribution. We don't know the exact number of plants, but we've estimated around 600, let's say. And so this has just <laughs> boosted, I guess, the population a little bit by, by 120 plants or so. 
In a few years, these plants are expected to start fruiting. Then progeny can be tested and genetic monitoring can check for any evidence of swamping and help keep the population healthy and ideally resilient in the face of threats such as disease, climate change and genetic isolation. More information about planning the Eucalyptus cryptica translocation and defining the species can be found in these publications. More general information about optimizing translocations with genetics can be found here. We hope you've enjoyed this short video. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to get in touch with any of the research team.